from Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight to debate or not to debate, that is the question. A Democratic state senator is challenging Governor Sean Parnell to a debate on Alaska's oil tax structure. That is Senator Bill Wilikowski's response to a tweet from Parnell's Twitter feed on Saturday. The tweet said that extreme Democratic legislators say Parnell's oil tax proposal goes too far, while the Alaska Oil and Gas Association says it doesn't go quite far enough. Wilikowski said the bill is bad public policy and amounts to a giveaway with no strings attached. He then asked the governor to debate him on the issue and statewide radio and TV. Today, Wilikowski spoke at a press conference about the governor's proposals. The governor wants to go back to a philosophy that failed us for 30 years. That probably cost the state of Alaska tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars in lost revenue. Look at Norway. Alaska has a permanent fund that is $40 billion roughly, maybe 42 or so. Norway has a permanent fund, less oil, less time, of over $600 billion. It's a difference of philosophy in how you manage, how you deal with this, with this, uh, with this issue. Several parents who have children at the Watershed Charter School off Dale Road testified last week before the Borough Air Pollution Control Commission about the need for a pollution monitor outside of the school. The commission unanimously approved a resolution asking the borough to look into the question of whether monitors are needed at local schools that include watershed. Meanwhile, a new group called Citizens for Clean Air held an organizational meeting last night at the Nolween Library Auditorium. Longtime local resident Carrie Dershin, one of the organizers of the group, spoke with the news center recently about their efforts and her hope they're not being viewed as political in nature. I think any time we, we move to politicize this type of a, a, a topic, um, this type of a concern, um, we potentially could really alienate all of the people that could be working together towards this. So whether it's things like the wood, change, or the wood stove change out program or increased monitoring in hot spots within the community um, or really working together to, to help improve our air with voluntary shutoff days, things like that. I mean, there's a lot of things we can do. Um, but most importantly, those that are not burning appropriately or using, um, using materials that shouldn't be burned, um, we want to ask them to stop um, at times that it's really critical to improve our air. In reaction to President Barack Obama's call for tighter gun law legislation and nearly two dozen executive orders signed into action, a local assemblyman is introducing a resolution to the Fairbanks North Star Borough Assembly in favor of Second Amendment rights. Assemblyman Michael Dukes will introduce Resolution 213-6 at tomorrow's assembly meeting. Resolution language reiterates both the constitutions of the United States and Alaska in protecting the rights of its citizens or individuals' rights to keep and bear arms. The resolution, if passed, states the Fairbanks North Star Borough will oppose any federal, state, or local acts, laws, orders, rules, or regulations regarding firearms, firearm accessories, or ammunitions. In an interview last week, Assemblymember Duke said he doesn't believe the U.S. Congress will take up firearm legislation. However, he says even on a local scale, citizens should keep government in check. There is no real interest of that in the legislature, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't stay vigilant. Uh, and keep our eyes on the uh, keep our eyes on the ball, uh, because, like I said, the first time we doze off and go to sleep, it'll be dead of the night again. And this time, I don't think there'll be a sunset on it. Okay, Daryl. Well, I heard mm -hmm. some really bad news. Yeah, I heard minus forties. Oh, I don't know. Uh, Mike, what can you tell us about that number? Please tell me it's not true. <laughs> Well, I'd like to say it's not true, but it looks like it's going to be definitely coming our way by Friday. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. Right now, around the area, we are zooming in on the Fairbanks area and showing you we do have some clouds and some light sna uh, snowflakes falling around here. Those snowflakes are also really not going to amount to a whole lot, but we are looking at a better chance of some snow tomorrow. Now, as far as the temperatures are concerned, yes, we are looking at temperatures dropping down to around the 40 below category. We'll tell you more about that. We'll also give you some tips and how you can prepare for the cold temperatures coming our way. All that coming up later on with weather. Daryl, Stephanie? Very well. Thank you, Mike. All right. When we come back, the Blood Bank of Alaska is looking for a specific type of blood donation. Also, in our military report, medevac training at Fort Wainwright. These stories are next. Stay with us. This edition of the Fairbanks Evening News is brought to you by Northland Hearing Services. 
Better hearing with a human touch. And welcome back. The blood bank says there is a critical shortage of O positive and O negative blood in Fairbanks. O negative and O positive are rare types and known as a universal donor because it can be used by anyone. Now it is important for the blood bank to have the O type blood on hand because they get weekly orders from the Fairbanks Memorial Hospital and Bassett Army Hospital. The need is not only in Fairbanks, but Anchorage is also soliciting donations to fill their requirements. Normal donations have decreased and the blood bank is encouraging former new donors to help during the crisis. So currently we're in critical need of O negative and O positive blood. Um, Anchor, the Anchorage hospitals and the Fairbanks hospitals uh, locally here, FMH, uh, within the last week have needed blood products for patients. Um, and usually we see 100, do 100 donors a day get registered and uh, this month our average has gone down and we are only uh, averagely seeing 85 donors a day. Now, if you've got O, here's what you need to know. Appointments are preferred, but walk-ins are also welcome. Now, if you have questions, you can call them at 456-5645. It is time once again for the Stone Soup Cafe's third annual Soup Off, this Friday night at the Fairbanks Princess Riverside Lodge. Volunteers with the Community Soup Kitchen put on the fundraiser each year to help supplement cost of operated, the cost of operating the facility. Local restaurants and businesses around the community are offering items for an outcry auction, in addition to a wine tasting event sponsored by K&L Distributors. The main event for the evening is the Soup Off, wherein dozens of local restaurants will submit their favorite soup recipe for the crowd. Each entry will be judged and final winners will be determined. Stone Soup Cafe is operated by the Breadline Incorporated, whose board members say no matter the time of year, funds are always needed for the soup kitchen. The need is always there, and um, it, it varies with the seasons. A number of people come in to, from the villages in the summertime, and our, our ranks swell. Um, when it's very, very cold, uh, there may be fewer people that uh, come around, but uh, they are even more so in need than they are in the summertime, so it varies. And again, the third annual Soup Off will be held Friday, January 25th at the Fairbanks Princess Riverside Lodge. Now tickets are $35 for adults or $25 for military. You must be 21 to attend. Tickets can be purchased at Grassroots Guitar, Team Cutters, and if only, excuse me, if only. When soldiers are wounded on the battlefield, their survival depends on the speedy response of a medic. New Center 11's Monty Bowen talks about medevac training that went on at Fort Wainwright in this week's military report. Soldiers in the 1st Striker Brigade Combat Team, 25th Infantry, trained in the art of live medical evacuation or medevac procedures in a joint exercise with pilots and crew members from the 16th Combat Aviation Brigade. The participants have already gone through classroom training. Uh, where they learn all, everything that involves uh, calling up a 9 line medevac, how to load the casualty. Uh, they moved into their hangar, did cold load training, um, to see what they're going to do. And now we moved over to the CACTIF to conduct hot load training. Where we actually have helicopters landing, um, our soldiers will package casualty, call a nine line, and move it out to the, uh, to the bird. The instruction consists of radio call-in procedures, litter operation, and how to effectively transport casualties to and from an aircraft. Medevac operations in Alaska can be a lot different than they are at sites in the lower 48. Uh, the weather plays a very, very uh, crucial role because the cold weather can one hurt the casualty, um, and then you get that in the rotor wash. A lot of snow will get kicked up. Um, temperatures can get down to about negative 100, depending on what the ambient temperature is. Monty Bowen, New Center 11. The Military Report is brought to you by Stanley Nissan. Innovation for all. I I heard minus 100. Did you hear that? Yeah, something there? like that. That's no, no, no. Wow. No, 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 I don't even believe that. <laughs> uh, something though that is equally as cool. Joe Cook and his sports report. I like Absolutely. That. Yeah. You know, stay cool, Les. You know I do. That is yeah. cool. <laughs> we got some high school uh, hockey action for you today. The regular season is almost over, and teams are positioning themselves for some playoff seating. And another Ice Dog makes a D1 commitment. That and more coming up in sports. Brought to you by the Law Office of Rita T. Alley. Peace of mind through professional legal services.
Hello, Interior Sports fans. Joe Cook here on a hump day in the sports seat for you. Another great weekend is just ahead. But first, let's get to your weekday sports and the high school hockey action last night. The Lathrop Malamutes came to the Polar Ice Arena to take on the North Pole Patriots. And two Malamutes put on a clinic in the first period. Strike again with a power play goal by senior Maxwell Blankenship, making it 2-0. Then the junior, Connor Nielsen, makes it 3-0 on a nice one-timer. He shot a laser as it hit the back of the net. Three penalties on North Pole, two power play goals for Lathrop. The second period got a little chippy with both teams getting penalties. The Patriots couldn't score on a 5-3 advantage. And after scoring just one goal in the second, the Malamutes, one-two punch of Nielsen and Blankenship went back to work. Three goals in the third third for a 7-0 Lathrop win. Hey, new goalie, same result. Ian Morey got a shutout, making 14 saves, following teammate Ryan Ebenel's shutout in Palmer in their last game. Nielsen and Blankenship both scored three goals and had two assists. They looked like Malkin and Crosby out there. Blankenship commented on the Purple and Gold's dynamic duo of himself and Nielsen. It was good working with him. We work well together. Uh, it was just good to get another win under our belt. We've been doing pretty bad in the past, so it was a nice W. Normally we peak at the end of the season, so and we're on the right track for that. So we're, we played some good hockey tonight. Um, I'm not necessarily going to say we're peaking. Um, we've had uh, we had a couple of rough games down in Anchorage, and then we put together two back-to-back good defensive games. So um, I'm happy with that. But we've got to get better every game. We've got a game against West Valley on Saturday. That's going to be a tough game. Um, you know, it, uh, it could dictate the number one seed going into the region tournament. Um, so we got to concentrate on that first. Then we've got another one against North Pole. Um, but the big one is going to be that first game um, in the region tournament that, you know, if you win that, you get to go to state. So we're kind of focusing on that right now. And in the more prep hockey action, the Monroe, the Monroe Rams score early and often in their win over Delta Junction, over the Delton Junction. Huskies 8-3 yesterday after trailing 1-0. Kyle Coley and Jacob Hebert had hat tricks to lead scoring for the Rams. Coley also added two assists. Delta's Jarrett Smith scored two of Delta's three goals. Nathaniel Bros made 19 saves for Monroe. The Rams are now 6-1 in conference and 11-3 overall. They played Hutchinson today and we'll have more on that game tomorrow. And high school basketball, the Monroe Catholic Rams continue their winning ways and finding different ways to win. Yesterday, without their full team of players, they were in they were the visitors in Delta Junction High School and in a war conference game. The Huskies were in the thick of things early. It was tied at 10 late in the first quarter. Then the Rams just thinned them out, allowing 19 more points. And the Rams win 60-29. Monroe had three players in double figures, led by Christian Nickerson, the big man, with 13 points. Jalen McCullough added 11. Scooter Bynum hit 10. Jordan Crabtree had a team high 11 points for Delta nine of which came in the third Monroe is now 14 and one overall and four and zero in conference on the girls side the Lady Rams have had Delta's number for the past few years the Huskies turned the tables yesterday with a 50 35 win rebounding was was big as Rachel Rivera and Deanna Linkick both had double doubles while Jess Reeder led Delta with a game high 17 points bringing the Huskies to 5 4 and 2 and 0 in conference Sarah Hadukovic led the Rams again with 11 points and the Ice Dogs continue to put feathers in their caps as a quality program that produces quality players for colleges. Doug Rose, the Ice Dogs defenseman from Sewell, New Jersey, has committed to play Division I college hockey in the Atlantic Hockey Association for Sacred Heart University. The Sacred Heart Pioneers are currently the only Division I team without a win, so the 19-year-old Rose will be a, power, a pioneer in more ways than one, trying to make Sacred Heart winners again. Rose, who is tied for fifth in points and Six in scoring for the Ice Dogs chose Sacred Heart because Fairfield, Connecticut is close to his hometown of Sewell. That brings the Ice Dogs D1 commits to six this season. The Ice Dogs and their top players will be in Fresno, California this weekend, taking on the Fresno Monsters. And that'll wrap things up for sports tonight. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. Be sure to check out more KTVF 11 sports on all our platforms, Twitter, YouTube, our new mobile app, and WebCenter11.com. Stay cool, Alaska. Mike Schultz has your full weather forecast coming up next, and we'll catch you next time. Joe, I was going to tell you not to say stay cool tonight, just stay frigid, because <laughs> that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Temperatures uh, are going to be <laughs> dropping down to really dangerous levels. Dangerous? Really? That's yeah. the first time I've ever heard you say that. To 40, 45 below, yeah, that's, that's definitely dangerous. Wasn't it 50 below one time? Well, you might even see that too, possibly. Who knows? Oh my gosh. Dangerous.
a lot of cold air coming in. We'll tell you about that in just a little bit. Let's go out to the airport and see what's going on. We've had little light snowflakes all day long. Not snow snakes, not snails, but snowflakes. <laughs> Our high today, 10 degrees above, a little last night, 7. The record high, 49, or 46 in 1977. Record low, 60 below in 1906. Sunrise this morning, 10.04. Sunset at 4.05, giving us over six hours of daylight. That's a gain of seven minutes from yesterday. Our photograph tonight sent in by Ron and Margie Illingworth. This was taken uh, last Monday when we had the rainfall, actually. They captured a rainbow. This was near Isleson Air Force Base. Again, thanks to Ron and Margie for sending it in and all you folks sending in your photographs. It's to Mike Schultz at KTBF11.com. Now the satellite picture to give you an idea of what's going on. We have a lot of strong cold air coming in from the northeast. That is going to combine with a, a pretty good front coming down from the south, or from the north, I say, down to the south. And that's going to bring a lot of snow to the east of the Fairbanks area. And then just leaving some, just some flurries here in the Fairbanks area. As you can see elsewhere, we're looking at the mixed rain and snow across the Anchorage Bowl. Now, over across the rest of the state, we have rain falling around Juneau and Ketchikan, also rain at Kodiak Island, just cloudy skies at Anchorage, up and down the west coast. Mainly uh, partly cloudy to cloudy skies, clear skies at Barrow, clear skies also at Fort Yukon. All right, lower 48 weather, lots of rain to talk about. It's all moving up the west coast. We'll show you that in just a little bit. Elsewhere across the country, pretty good over the eastern half of the country, but still pretty chilly. Now the west coast, this is what all the uh, energy is talking about. Look at all the rain all the way up and down from uh, San Diego all the way to Seattle. That's going to mean a lot of rain uh, continuing to fall, all because of this storm system moving in from the Pacific Ocean, bringing showers. And the jet stream will be taking a dive way down to the south, pulling a lot of cold air down as far south as, uh, well, Arizona, New Mexico. Also continue very cold across the Great Lakes. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow. Over the northern sections, mostly clear skies in Barrow. Blowing snow at Nome and light snow expected for Fort Yukon. Here in the interior, we'll be looking at a flurry activity around the Fairbanks area, but a better chance of seeing some snow around Denali Park in Healy with two to four inches expected there. Over the southeastern sections of the state, mixed rain and snow in Juneau. Periods of rain for Ketchikan and over to the southwest. Well, looking at uh, mixed snow, show, snow showers, I should say, in Cold Bay, rain for Kodiak and partly cloudy at Bethel. And over the south central regions, partly cloudy in Anchorage, showers for Homer. Valdez may see a couple inches of snow. Once again, time for our kids' weather watch. And tonight, a young lady has uh, how you f get snow. <laughs> you need water, cold, heat, sun, and salt to make some snow and the clouds drop the snow and and then and snowflakes do not like each other and what she said at the very end was no two snowflakes are alike tomorrow night a young man will be here with a question about hail here's your forecast for the remainder of the night all we have is severe weather cold uh, severe cold weather tips to pass along to you for your automobile make sure your battery's strong tires are inflated properly you have jumper cables blankets coats and gloves and always let someone know where you're going okay here's your forecast for tonight four below cloudy skies a little snow possible at times tomorrow's forecast not 64, 4 degrees, cloudy with periods of snow, 1 to 3 inches possible, and the extended forecast, uh, not, we wish it was that warm, right, Joe? Uh, overnight lows, you can see dropping down to 40 to 42 below over the weekend, a little bit of a reprieve as we head toward the first part of next week, and no more snow possible right on through Friday and Tuesday, but cold temperatures, definitely, and dangerous temperatures in the forecast. I, like I don't know, I feel like I should be getting yeah. out my sunglasses for that 64 degrees. I yeah. wish, yeah, I wish. <laughs> All right, well, remember, you can find KTVF 11 and our news stories almost everywhere. Check us out on website at 11.com, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and now our very own app. Find out more on website at 11.com. Very good. All right, that will wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. As always, we are glad you could join us. Tonight on NBC Nightly News, the latest on the heated exchanges between the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and Republicans on Capitol Hill. That's next with Brian Williams. Join us right here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. That would do it from all of us here at the News Center. Before we go with our video tonight, provided by Stephanie, who had a nice visit today. Yes, I went and visited the North Star Learning Center and... Here's a very cute video of some of the little kids. <laughs>